does a pacemaker treat atrial fibrillation? I always get patients come to me who with atrial fibrillation, and we're talking about how atrial fibrillation is abnormal sources of electricity that form inside the wall, other walls of the heart different from the normal source that are randomly waking up, taking over control of your heart away from the normal source and telling your heart to speed up and how it can cause clots and strokes. And oftentimes these people have a lot of symptoms from their AFib. Their heart rates are fast, they feel the palpitations and we're sometimes having difficulty controlling those symptoms with drugs to slow it down or drugs to keep the AFib cells asleep or an ablation to try to get rid of it from the inside. And invariably, the patients will come and say, well, why can't you just put a pacemaker in and, and treat it that way? Because, you know, I have a friend who had a pacemaker to treat their AFib. So we need to talk about the fact that a pacemaker by itself is not a direct treatment for atrial fibrillation. Um, think about what a pacemaker does and think about what atrial fibrillation does. So atrial fibrillation, is ab an abnormal source of electricity that's forming in the walls of your heart in a different spot than where your normal source of electricity is. And remember, your heart runs on electricity and whatever s electrical signals it gets from, a ab from an electrical source, whether it be your normal source or an abnormal source, it's just gonna follow directions and beat at that speed. So it's being told to what to do or what speed to beat at based on whatever source of electricity is in control. So if you're in your normal rhythm, your brain's controlling that, it's telling your normal source to send out electricity at the speed your brain wants your heart to go at and everything's fine. When AFib wakes up, it's sending out electricity super fast because nobody's controlling the AFib cells and they just kind of go haywire and they just randomly send out electricity super fast and tell your heart to speed up. And now your heart's racing and you may be feeling symptoms. So if we put a pacemaker in, technically speaking, that's not going to do anything to help your symptoms of atrial fibrillation. Why? because a pacemaker treats slow heart rates, not fast heart rates. A pacemaker is a very simple device. It's been around for like 60 years or more, and it's a tiny device that goes underneath the skin. It's about the size of a silver dollar these days, and it has a spaghetti-like electrical wire attached to it that goes into your heart through a vein, because you have arm veins draining blood from your arms back to the heart, and so we can put the pacemaker lead or spaghetti-like wire into the vein right where the device inserts in your chest and it follows that vein into your heart and the little wire touches your heart from the inside and that way it can sense the electricity that's flowing inside your heart now who do we give pacemakers to we give them to people with slow heart rate problems so as people get older oftentimes their normal source of electricity that's in the roof of their heart that's sending out electricity and controlling the heart it gets old too and it can malfunction as it gets older. And it can start to send out electricity at a much slower speed than what the brain wants it to go at. So if the brain's saying, hey, you, you know, your heart rate should, I want the heart rate to be 70 beats per minute, but instead the source of electricity in your heart is so old and malfunctioning that it sends out electricity at 30 or 40 beats per minute, well, then the person's gonna have too slow of a heart rate. And they're gonna feel lousy and tired. Or if it's slow enough, they may even feel lightheaded and briefly pass out. Or if they're exercising and the heart rate's supposed to speed up because the brain says, hey, this person's you know, exercising or running, you need to speed up, and it can't do that, and the person has too slow of a heart rate making them feel lousy, that's when we put in a pacemaker. So the pacemaker is smart enough to sense the electricity and we program it and say, hey, anything slower than this speed is too slow. So if the speed of the normal rhythm goes too slow below what we program it, then it's going to send out its own artificial signals at a faster speed to take over control of the heart and make the heart go at a faster speed to treat the slow heart rates. Remember, when there are two sources of electricity inside your heart fighting for control, the faster source always wins. The faster source always overrides the slower source, takes over control. And so in this instance, if your normal heart rhythm is going too slow at 30 or 40 beats per minute and you feel lousy and the pacemaker paces you at 60 beats per minute, artificially, your heart rate's gonna be 60 beats per minute. But what happens when you're in atrial fibrillation? The AFib cells wake up, they make your heart go much faster, 90, 100, 130, 150, you're feeling severe palpitations. How could a pacemaker actually help with that? The pacemaker doesn't just automatically take over control of your heart. It would say, oh, well, the heart rate's 
faster than 60 beats per minute, it's not too slow, it wouldn't even send out a signal. It wouldn't even try to pace. And even if it did try to pace your heart, it couldn't actually take over control of your heart unless it were to pace your heart at a speed faster than the atrial fibrillation is making your heart go at. Because remember, when there's two sources of electricity in your heart, the faster source always overrides the slower source and takes over control. So if you're, you're an AFib at 120 beats per minute, feeling lousy, well, the pacemaker I would do, either would do nothing, or if you force the pacemaker to pace you at 130, 140 beats per minute, I suppose it could take over control of your heart, but then now your heart rate's even faster and you'd feel even worse. So a pacemaker by itself does not do anything to directly treat atrial fibrillation. I think this whole, oh, just give me a pacemaker to treat the AFib, actually harkens back to say 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, Back then, we didn't have as many options to treat the symptoms of atrial fibrillation. These days, we have medicines to slow down your AFib so that you feel it less, medicines to keep it asleep so that it wakes up less, and then ablation procedures that are getting more and more advanced every few years where we actually try to get rid of the AFib cells from the inside so that long-term, you may not have any AFib. It always eventually slowly grows back, but for long periods of time, depending on how much you have and who's doing it and their skill level can sometimes get rid of uh, AFib for a long periods of time. But 10, 15, 20 years ago, we didn't have as many options to keep people in normal rhythm and ablation techniques were in their infancy and we really couldn't do very much with it at that time. So at that point in time, you really didn't have a lot of options. If your AFib was making your heart go fast, then most of the time we would just try to slow it down with a medicine and make you tolerate it, not feel it. So if you're going in and out of AFib, and you're, when you're in AFib, your heart rates are 130 and you feel lousy, and we put you on a medicine to slow that down. So instead of it being at 130, it's at 100 or 90, and you just feel better and tolerate it better. And then when you're not in AFib, you feel fine. But here's the problem sometimes you get with that. If you're going in and out of AFib, and we put you on a bunch of medicines to slow down your AFib rate, so that when you're in it, it's not as fast and you feel better and you can tolerate it, well, what happens when the AFib goes back to sleep? Then your normal rhythm takes back over control, but it's not going super fast. Sometimes as you get older, your normal rhythm gets old too, and it starts to go kind of slow. So let's say you go back to your normal rhythm in between episodes of AFib, and you're older, and your heart rate isn't 70, 80, 90 beats per minute, it's 40s and 50 beats per minute. And then you're on a bunch of medicines to slow down your AFib when you're in it, but see those medicines slow down whatever rhythm you're in. Whether you're in AFib, it slows that down. If you're in your normal rhythm, it's gonna slow that down too. It doesn't know what rhythm you're in, it just slows everything down. So if your normal rhythm takes back over control and it's not even that fast, and now you're on a bunch of medicines to slow your AFib down, it's gonna slow your normal rhythm down and sometimes make your heart rate too slow. So in the old days, a lot of pacemakers were implanted just so that people could tolerate being on high doses of these rate controlling medications to treat the symptoms of their AFib because when they were in AFib, the medicine kept it slower so they could tolerate it. And then when they were in their normal rhythm, if those medicines made their normal rhythm speed way too slow, then the pacemaker would kick in and make the heart go to normal speed. So it kind of created a floor below which the heart rate wouldn't go. And then the medicines, it allowed them to use high doses of the medicines to slow down the AFib to try to keep them in this middle range. But we don't do that quite as much these days because we have more options. We have better drugs to keep the AFib asleep and we can do ablation on a lot more people than we used to be able to and affect and get good results on a lot more people, even in the more complex cases where people have a lot more AFib to keep them more in normal rhythm. And so therefore we don't need to do that as much as we used to do. But people just hear about that and think about that and they think somehow the pacemaker will magically just take over control of their heart and make their heart go at a normal speed, which is just completely not true. Now, there is one last indication for a pacemaker and that would be what happens when your AFib gets to be permanent? Remember we said as the AFib, as you get older, it just keeps growing more and more, spreading from wall to wall. And when it covers all six walls of that left upper chamber of the heart, the left atrium, where it forms in, it's like a big forest fire covering your entire forest. You get to the point where you're in an AFib 100%. And at that point, we cannot get you out of the atrial fibrillation. No medicine is gonna be strong enough to keep it asleep. No ablation is gonna be able to get rid of enough to make the forest fire small enough where you're most, where you're spending a lot of time out of the AFib because once it's permanent, you can't really put out a forest fire once it's permanent. Now, in a normal forest fire, once it covers the entire forest and every inch of the forest is on fire and the firefighters, forest rangers go, we can't put that out anymore. It's just too much. We can't even make it smaller. Well, then they just leave it alone and hope that eventually it burns itself out. Well, 
in your heart, the AFib cells, once they're covering all, every inch of every wall of that chamber and they're awake 100% of the time and we can't get you out of it anymore, well, we just say you're going to be an AFib for the rest of your life. And unfortunately, the AFib cells will not burn themselves out. They'll just be awake from that point forward. But remember, we said that's not life-threatening as long as you stay on a blood thinner and you don't have a clot in a stroke, which is the most dangerous thing that can happen with AFib. Everything else we do is for symptoms. So in that point, we just put you on a medicine to slow your heart rate down to a level where hopefully you can tolerate it and just say, that's the best we can do, but you're not gonna die from atrial fibrillation. But what about the situations where we try to, the AFib is felt to be permanent and we try to slow down their AFib with rate controlling medications, but we can't. And it's still super fast. And the person's like, well, my AFib's permanent. So are you telling me I just have to be miserable for the rest of my life because my AFib's permanent and you can't slow my heart rate down? No, there is still one last option we can do at that point, And that is we can do a minor ablation where we actually, instead of going up and doing a full ablation where we try to cauterize many walls of the left upper chamber of the heart to get rid of the AFib cells directly, we make one burn in the middle of the heart for usually five or 10 minutes and we're done. What have we done? We have purposely destroyed the nerve that runs right through the heart that conducts electricity through the heart. See, we said that whether your normal source is telling your heart to beat by sending out electricity in the roof of your heart or the AFib cells, which are also in the top chamber of your heart, the atria, sending out electricity at faster speeds. Interestingly enough, you have four chambers in your heart, two upper and two lower. The two upper chambers are called atria. The two bottom chambers are called ventricles. It's the bottom chambers, the ventricles that actually pump blood out of your heart. So when the sources, whether it be AFib is in control or your normal source cells are in control, they have to get their electrical signals down to these bottom chambers to tell them what speed to beat at. When you measure your heart rate, you're measuring the bottom chambers. The top chambers just help push blood to the bottom chambers, but they are not essential for life and, and there's passive blood flow through those chambers in the bottom chambers naturally. So they're kind of the atria actually work as primer pumps just to kind of help push the last little blood flow with each beat to make them more efficient. But bottom line is when you feel your heart rate, when you say your heart rate is fast in atrial fibrillation, we're talking about the bottom chambers of your heart, the ventricles, what speed they're going at. So there's actually a nerve that conducts electricity from the top chambers through the middle of your heart to the bottom chambers. And that nerve called the atrial ventricular node atrial ventricular node, it's what conducts electricity from whether you're in normal rhythm or an abnormal rhythm down to the bottom chambers to tell them what speed to beat at. Now, when we normally do our AFib ablations, we try to stay away from that nerve because we don't want to damage it by getting rid of the AFib cells. Because what happens if you damage this nerve? If you damage it and it can't conduct electricity through the heart, then the bottom chambers aren't going to get all the signals to be and your heart rate's going to be too slow and you're going to need a pacemaker. So. Uh, and that's the reason why pacemakers were invented in the first place. Either the normal source was getting old and sending out electricity too slow, or that nerve was getting old and not conducting all the signals that from your normal source. And either way, the bottom chambers weren't getting enough signals. They were beating too slow. And that's why we put a pacemaker in. But if you're permanently in atrial fibrillation and your heart rates are super duper fast and we can't seem to slow that down enough and you're miserable, we can do something where we burn that nerve purposely, which is usually very easy to do, usually only takes like 10 minutes. And why would we do that? Well, because if we burn that nerve and damage it purposely, we can make it so the AFib no longer controls the bottom chambers of your heart. So it doesn't matter how fast the AFib cells are sending out electricity, none of those signals get to the bottom chamber of your heart, your heart will never be fast ever again. But then you say, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. If my AFib cells can't control the bottom chambers of my heart, well, does that also mean my normal source can't control the bottom chambers of my heart? Because my normal source at the top of my heart also uses those nerves to get its signals to my bottom chambers of my heart. So yes, exactly. Your normal source would not be able to control the bottom chambers of your heart. No source from the top could control your bottom chambers. So you said, but then that means I wouldn't have a heartbeat because my heart runs on electricity. And if no signals get to the bottom chambers of my heart, then I would have no heartbeat. I'd have a zero heartbeat, heart rate of zero, I'd be dead. That's where the pacemaker comes in. So the pacemaker says, hey, his heart rate's zero. I'm going to pace him 100% of the time at a normal speed. So the analogy would be, let's say that this room was your heart and the generator in the back was supplying electricity through the wiring to make the lights turn on. And let's say the generator in the back was infected with uh, what we call AFib, abnormal AFib circuits that are making the lights flicker and go crazy. 
And so we try to do a AFib ablation to, you know, or use a medicine or whatever to fix those abnormal circuits, quiet them down, put them to sleep, or get rid of them directly so that the lights don't keep flickering and going crazy. But if we can't do that and the lights are just going crazy, flickering and going crazy, well, the best, next best thing we could do is we make a hole in the wall of the heart where the electrical wiring is, snip the electrical wiring. Well, now the lights go out because the generator, no matter how crazy it is, can't affect the lights anymore and make them go crazy. So we snip the wiring. Now the generator can't control the lights, but then now the lights are out. Where does it get electricity from? We have to hook up our own portable generator to the lights and power it that way. That's what the pacemaker is. It's a portable electric generator that's telling your heart to beat. And so the advantage of doing that would be if your AFib truly was permanent and we put in a pacemaker and block the nerve, the AV node, then you would not need to be on any medicines to slow down your AFib. You don't need to be on any medicines to keep the AFib asleep because nothing's going to work at that point. It's already permanent. Um, so it would get you off some medications. The flip side though is you need a pacemaker implanted. You are what we call pacemaker dependent, meaning if you disappear for 10, 15 years and let the pacemaker battery die, you will have no rhythm. And not that you're going to do that. You would have no rhythm though, and you could pass it and die. So therefore you, you do have to have a pacemaker and you'd have to be pacemaker dependent. And it wouldn't get you off the blood thinner because the top part of your heart is still in atrial fibrillation. Clots can still form. And so you still need to be on the blood thinner, but it is a way to control the symptoms of permanent atrial fibrillation. If we cannot adequately control the speed in that situation. So the two times where a pacemaker does make sense to treat AFib is if you're using medicines to slow down episodes of AFib at earlier stages, but by doing so, you're making the normal rhythm too slow at times, pacemaker could keep the normal rhythm from getting too slow. Or if your AFib is virtually permanent and we can't adequately control the speed with medications, you could block the nerve, make the person pacemaker dependent and just control the heart rate that way mechanically.